Have you ever been convinced of a fact, only to find out you've remembered it entirely wrong? This is the phenomenon known as the Mandela Effect, named after Nelson Mandela, the anti-apartheid revolutionary and former president of South Africa. Intriguingly, many people across the globe remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison during the 1980s, even though he was released in 1990 and lived until 2013. How can such a widespread false memory exist? And why do so many South Africans believe in this alternate version of history? The term Mandela Effect was coined by Fiona Broom in 2010. Broom, a paranormal consultant, noticed that she, along with many others, incorrectly remembered Nelson Mandela's death occurring in the 1980s while he was still imprisoned. This false memory included vivid recollections of news coverage and even Mandela's funeral. Despite these clear and detailed memories, the truth is that Mandela was released from prison in 1990, went on to become the first black president of South Africa, and passed away peacefully in 2013. The phenomenon of the Mandela effect encompasses more than just Mandela's supposed early death. Other popular examples include the collective misremembering of details such as the color of C-3PO's leg in Star Wars, which is partially silver, not entirely gold, and the famous line from Snow White, which is magic mirror on the wall, rather than the oft misquoted mirror, mirror on the wall. One key to understanding the Mandela effect lies in the power and fallibility of collective memory. Collective memory refers to how groups of people remember and forget the past, often shaping and reshaping historical narratives in the process. In the case of Nelson Mandela, his long imprisonment, global fame, and the significant impact he had on the world's political landscape have all contributed to a potent collective memory. During the 1980s, Mandela's plight was a focal point for anti-apartheid activism worldwide. He became a symbol of resistance and sacrifice, and his imprisonment was a central narrative in the global media. It's possible that the intense focus on his imprisonment and the emotional investment in his struggle created a fertile ground for false memories to take root. Over time, the lines between reality and imagination blurred, leading some people to remember Mandela's death in prison as a historical fact. Psychologists offer several explanations for why the Mandela effect occurs, many of which revolve around the concept of false memory. False memories are recollections of events that never happened or that are distorted from the actual events. They can arise through various mechanisms, such as suggestion, misattribution, and confabulation. Confabulation involves the brain's attempt to fill in gaps in memory with fabricated or misinterpreted information. This process is often unconscious and can be surprisingly convincing. When people recall a false memory, they are not lying. Rather, their brain has created a cohesive narrative that feels real. Schema theory is another psychological concept that helps explain the Mandela effect. Schemas are mental structures that organize knowledge and guide information processing. They help us make sense of the world by providing a framework for understanding new experiences. However, schemas can also lead to memory distortion. For example, if someone has a schema about Nelson Mandela that includes him as a martyr who suffered greatly under apartheid, this schema might support a false memory of his death in prison. The brain, in its effort to create a coherent narrative, might insert details that align with this schema, even if they are not true. The advent of the internet and social media has significantly amplified the Mandela effect. Misinformation and false memories can spread rapidly online, reinforced by the echo chamber effect, where people are exposed primarily to information that confirms their pre-existing beliefs. When someone encounters a false memory online, it can feel validated by the sheer number of people who share the same incorrect recollection. In the case of Mandela's supposed death in prison, Early internet forums and discussions may have played a role in perpetuating this false memory. As more people shared their incorrect memories, the narrative gained traction and credibility, creating a self-reinforcing cycle. While psychological theories provide a robust framework for understanding the Mandela Effect, some explanations venture into the realm of pseudoscience and the paranormal. Fiona Broom herself suggested that the Mandela Effect might be evidence of alternate realities or parallel universes. According to this theory, each universe has its own version of events, and the Mandela effect occurs when individuals shift between these realities. 
Other more fantastical explanations include time travel and glitches in the fabric of reality, akin to the concept of a computer simulation. While these theories are certainly intriguing and capture the imagination, they lack empirical evidence and are not scientifically testable. Interestingly, the Mandela Effect seems to have a stronger hold in South Africa, where Nelson Mandela's life and legacy are deeply embedded in the national consciousness. For South Africans, Mandela is not just a historical figure but a symbol of their struggle for freedom and justice. The intensity of emotional and cultural investment in Mandela's story may contribute to the persistence of false memories about his life and death. Additionally, during Mandela's imprisonment, there were numerous rumors and misinformation campaigns aimed at discrediting the anti-apartheid movement. Some of these rumors included false reports of Mandela's death, which may have sown the seeds for the later widespread false memory. The Mandela Effect highlights how collective memories can shape and reshape historical narratives. While it may seem like a trivial curiosity, the phenomenon has broader implications for how societies remember the past and construct their identities. For instance, if a significant portion of the population believes in an incorrect version of historical events, it can influence public perception and even policy decisions. The Mandela Effect serves as a reminder of the importance of critical thinking and the need to verify information, especially in the digital age where misinformation can spread rapidly. Memory is not a perfect recording of events, but a reconstructive process that is susceptible to errors. Researchers have demonstrated this through various studies, such as the dees rodiger mcdermott paradigm, which shows how people can falsely recall words that were not presented but are semantically related to words that were. Another famous study by psychologist Elizabeth Loftus involved implanting false memories in participants through suggestive questioning. Loftus showed that people could be led to remember events that never happened, such as being lost in a shopping mall as a child. This research underscores how malleable and fallible human memory can be. False memories can have serious consequences in real-world situations, such as in the legal system. Eyewitness testimony, which heavily relies on memory, can be unreliable and lead to wrongful convictions. The phenomenon of false memories emphasizes the need for corroborating evidence and the use of reliable methods in forensic investigations. The Mandela Effect is a fascinating phenomenon that reveals much about the human mind, collective memory, and the ways in which we construct and reconstruct our understanding of the past. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to Africa Info Hub for more insights into Africa's geopolitics, economy, and changing landscape.